Hello and welcome to the vlog. This is going to be very much a catch-up vlog where I try to condense the past two months into a single video. But do not worry, it's neither going to be a very long video nor am I simply going to play everything out at a thousand times speed. The simple truth is not a lot has happened in the last two months, mainly because I have been sitting on a mooring for those two months. And I will come back to why in a minute. First of all though, Cast your mind back to the last of the videos where we were following my, my progress, as it were, and of course it was the Yelvertoft gas locker repainting exercise. And that kept me busy for the whole of June. Not because repainting a gas locker actually takes a month, but the weather was terribly intermittent during June. We had rainy days and sunny days, and when you're trying to do painting, that got in the way. So it just scattered the job out over more days than it really should have taken. But also, I had several days work during June, and I went to visit family as well. So one way or another, I was at Yelvertoft for the whole month of June. So let's pick up the story then as I went back in the water. Here's my boat, up on the chocks along with others that were also having work done, such as blacking. Marina manager Neil gets the tractor and trailer off the slipway and will now manoeuvre it skillfully into place ahead of my boat. Now comes the tricky bit for which nail biting is compulsory, the reversing of the trailer under the boat. Believe me, there is nothing quite so tense as watching this when it's happening. Those weights on the front of the tractor are to counterbalance the 16 tonnes or so of the boat. The hydraulics then go into action, lifting the bow in front of the first wooden chocks, which expert Gary can then remove. Now the trailer can move backwards towards the rear and pick up the boat. Again, a somewhat tense time. And a rare chance to get a good look at the underside to see how the 10mm steel base plate is faring after 15 years in the water. With the boat lifted, it's off to the slipway. It's quickly back in and floating so expert Gary can pull it backwards on the ropes to take it off the trailer. I fired up the engine and will now take the boat carefully backwards into the main canal channel and steer it back round to the marina for some fuel, all the time trying not to hit that other boat that was waiting to come onto the slip. Yes, that is a pile of bird poo on the left of my fuel cap. Damn those pigeons! This is going to hurt my wallet that sets me up for what's to come. After five weeks back at Yelvertoft, three on the hard standing and two in the water, it's now time to venture off again. But where? I'm not telling. Some of the scenery, though, might look familiar. First, left out of Yelvertoft, southwest down the Grand Union Leicester Arm. Past a very healthy looking family of geese. The spate of alternately wet, then sunny weather throughout June has made the greenery grow like Jack's beanstalk. There's a towpath behind that lot. Cracks Hill, with that dilapidated boat remains still there, but I think they've been moved. Is something afoot? Tunnel time! Yay! This is a crick. Repeat after me. I am not afraid. One last glance backwards at the daylight before I dive in. And before you know it, I'm at Watford Locks. Several boats coming up the flight, so I'll have to wait. Here's the one in the top lock, just coming out. While I hang about, I can't help noticing the substantial solar array on this nearby house. That must generate a fair bit. Still waiting for other boats to come up after half an hour, but it's a nice day to idle time away. And there's quite the queue of us in line for our turn. We'll all go down one after the other when the flight turns our way. I'll spare you the individual locks and cut to me moored at the bottom for the night. Good morning, it's the start of day two. It is almost sunny, a little bit windy mind you, but hopefully that won't be a problem. This stretch next to Norton Junction was all moorable when I last came past, albeit that the bank was collapsing badly. Hopefully the orange fencing means they're fixing it, not just stopping us from mooring there. It's not looking good overhead though. Where did that sun go? 
I rather liked this chap pondering a sneaky bath in the cattle trough. And then it's Braunston Tunnel again. I'm actually getting used to it now. So Braunston Tunnel done once more. Two boats passed. The first one largely without incident. I had a tiny nudge against the side of the tunnel. And the second one a very nasty graunch by me on the side of the tunnel at the back here. And I think that's because we were trying to pass at one of the many places where that wretched tunnel has a kink in it and it doesn't make things easy. Six double locks to descend into Braunston, done and dusted in a couple of hours single-handed. And here is Braunston once more. Up ahead, the choice of turns north, west and further on, south and northwest. And that is where I stopped filming because I was bringing the boat to what is now my mooring. And would you show your home address on the internet? Probably not. So what have I been doing in the last two months, July and August? Well, July was a bit like June. I had loads of days of work where I needed the car, I needed to go out. So essentially I sat here because I was getting on with work. August, the main summer holiday, hordes of people out on the canal, really, really busy, and frankly, I just didn't fancy going out with all the congestion such as it is on a canal. So I stayed here, the weather was nice, I drank gin and tonic, and enjoyed the peaceful life being on the boat. It was actually rather glorious. In two months' time, it's November. Christmas is a coming. And of course, November through to March is the normal winter shutdown period, just as like last year, I was in Yelvertoff Marina over winter, so this year I was always going to be moored up for winter. And yes, there are some boaters who keep on cruising through winter, but I'm not one of them. I like cruising when it's nice, and in winter the days are short and the weather's often horrible, so I would prefer to be in one place. That gives me September and October to do any more cruising this year. There will be some cruising. I'm not as the lovely ladies of the Narrowboat Experience channel said, I'm not turning into mooring the cut. I am still cruising the cut. But they will be more limited cruises, no great big adventures, because I've done that thing you do when you stay in one place for any time. Having been here July and August, I've just very gently started to put down, not quite roots, but a couple of little tentacles. Let's put it like that. I've got a regular weekly commitment locally that is about to start and I won't be able to avoid that without booking a day off. And besides, I want to do it anyway. So to cut the long story short, any cruises for the next couple of months will be shortish, less than a week cruises, maybe even day trips, things like that. Then we get to winter and I'll probably be moored up for most of winter again, barring the odd day trip here and there if we get a surprisingly nice day. I am still going to be making vlogs, of course. Again, the first eight months of my YouTube channel, I was just sitting at Yelvertoft and I made hordes of vlogs. So there's, there's plenty more to come of life aboard the boat. I've had several requests from people to do videos about the toilets and it, it is one I've been meaning to do for months. So I've got two toilet videos planned, great. And the other one, of course, that people always ask me is about costs. Costs of buying a boat, costs of running a boat, costs of being on a boat in winter, costs of being on a boat in summer. So even though it is going to be the dullest video as a piece of video, it's me and my laptop and a spreadsheet, I am going to do one or more videos about costs. So hopefully that will put that question to bed. But far more exciting than that, coming up very soon, possibly the next vlog, to celebrate my massive increase in YouTube subscriber numbers. And hello, if you are a new subscriber, and especially if you came over to this channel from the Exploring Alternatives channel, thank you very much for joining the Cruising the Cut party. Anyway, to celebrate those extra numbers and the fact that I've now passed half a million total views for my videos, I'm going to be having a competition with a prize and hopefully this will be a worldwide competition, so whatever it is, you're, wherever you are in the world, you can enter. But you are going to have to have watched all my vlogs. There will be a quiz, there will be questions, and you'll need to email in your answers. Anyway, more details about that in a future video. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers now. Bye-bye. <laughs>